Hi, it's Bishop Frank, and I'm on day seven of the video series now, the devotional for Psalm 91. And I hope you've been following along. If this is the first time you're joining me, then you can go to my website, my church website, www.lwchurchnj.com. Again, that's lwchurchnj.com. And all the videos are there in the video tab. So that'll be good for you if you want to go back and watch them again, refresh your memory. This is something we need to do every day right now. We need to do two things. We need to read Psalm 91, and we need to put on the armor of God. Each day we need to put on the armor of God. Lord, protect my mind, my heart, my, my, my loins. In other words, things that I do and say to reproduce. Um, let me reproduce Christ and others in the things I say and do. And we need to have the gospel shoes of peace on. And then we bring peace to people. We share the good news with others. And we have the peace of God that passes understanding, gets into their hearts and minds also. And then reading Psalm 91. So I hope you're reading it each day, starting off today uh, in the same way. And it's good to do this in the morning. I know you might have to get up early. You might have to do something different in order to do it in the morning. But in the morning, it's going to make a major difference for you. Because during the day, at the end of the day, when you do this at the end of the day, you're tired. You've already been through everything. You need this in the morning. This is your your daily vitamins. You know, back uh, years ago when we would talk about healing and stuff, and people would say, to, the doctor would say, take two pills and call me in the morning. I'd say, take, to God, take a gospel and call me in the morning. And we need the gospel. We need the message of Jesus right now. So let's look together at Psalm 91 and read up to where we are today. Okay? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth, put your mind on him. Think about the Lord. Let him be on your thoughts all, to, all day long. Isaiah 23, 6 says what? I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So get our minds on Jesus. And then we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And when we are under the shadow of the anointing of the Almighty of El Shaddai, then we will say of the Lord, we will tell others, we will speak to others. We need to share this with other people also so that they hear this. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In him will I trust. You know, I'm very grateful for everything the government is doing. I'm a little bit wary of some of the things that certain states are doing and certain counties are doing. I think maybe some things are overboard, some things are not. That's all of our opinions. They're in charge of taking care of us. Our charge is to pray for them. So when you're praying this also, when you're reading the psalm, you'd be praying for the leaders in our government because, boy, they need our prayers right now. They really do. Okay? Whether we like them or not, they need our prayers. So, he shall deliver thee. Surely he shall deliver thee. Not maybe he'll deliver thee. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. We have to pray and watch out for the enemy's traps now. The thought traps. The word traps. The relationship traps. That we say the wrong thing to the wrong person at the wrong time. And then we end up with a mess. We need to think before we speak. My wife keeps reminding me, Frank, think before you speak. Make sure that you're not falling into a trap, the snare of the fowler. You know, he's going to try to trap you. So be careful. Uh, be on your guard, okay? So we want to, he'll deliver us from the snare of the fowler. If we fall in it, he'll get us out. And from the noisome pestilence. And remember, I told you, this means the attacking virus. The rushing attacking virus. The pestilence is the virus. And that's what God's going to protect us from. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. We've gone into that already, so I'm not going to speak too much about that now. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in, noon, in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. That's so much. There's so much there. Unpack it as you read it. Think about it as you read it. Go over these videos. Uh, you know, meditate on these things. And the most important thing I want to say to you right now, verse 5, thou shalt not be afraid. What time I am afraid, David said, I will trust in the Lord. So right now it's a matter of just saying when fear comes on you, I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm trusting in the Lord. Listen, we're at a place that we've never been at before. The world is in a situation that has never been at before. If the body of Christ does not rise up, put on its boots, combat boots, get ready for battle. If we don't do that, if we crack under fear, if we give in to anxiety, what hope has anybody got? We have the Lord. We have the Holy Spirit. We're the ones that have the solution and the answer in the spiritual realm. 
We're praying for those looking for the answers in the natural realm, but we have the answer in the spiritual realm. So we need to make sure we are on guard. We are dressed for battle. We are filled with compassion. We've got the gospel shoes of peace with us. So we're walking in peace. Amen. So let's go to verse 8. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. The wicked is the is the enemy, the devil. We're going to see that happen. He's going to get back tenfold for what he's doing. All this stuff is going to get repaid. We'll see that later on. But let's focus on verse 9 now. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. That word evil is a word that means no worthless thing. No worthless thing. Nothing that is just so totally without any positive or good value that nothing that is absent of God will befall you. God will watch over you and protect you. Bad things will happen. Things will go wrong, but no evil shall befall you. And that's where people go wrong. They think, well, you know, evil things have happened. They've befallen me. No, no. This, this, this is talking about something that goes beyond nasty goes beyond bad. It goes beyond some demonic influence. This says, no evil shall befall thee. In other words, there's nothing that will happen to you that God can't make something out of it. Okay? Something that is evil in this sense. I've researched this word. In this sense, this word evil, it means worthless. It means without any value. God will get value out of anything negative that the devil does. And we got to realize that. So no evil shall be for you. There's nothing that is going to happen that God can't turn it and work it for good. Romans 8.28. Boy, that's such a powerful verse we need to have inside of us. Romans 8.28. I am convinced. I am totally sold out to my belief. Nothing is going to happen to me that God can't turn it for good. Because I love him and I'm called according to his purposes. I'm not telling him what my life should be. I'm saying, Lord, that your will be done in my life. You got that? Okay. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. So we need to trust God. You put the blood on the doorpost and the lintel of your house, on your natural house, you pray your protection. My wife and I came in from a walk just before. We stopped at the door, said a prayer. Let your blessing be on our house. Let your peace be in our house. There's anxiety. We, we're getting, you know, we're, we're rubbing against each other at times because of the stuff going on. So we need to be at peace and trusting the Lord. Okay, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. This is the, this is the verse that the, the devil quoted to Jesus when he was tempting him in the wilderness. He took him to the temple, put him on the peak, the highest part, and said, jump off. Because the word says his angels will have charge over you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. They'll catch you. And Jesus said, it is written again, Satan, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So this is what we need to do. In this coronavirus situation or anything like this, we need to do the right things. We cannot act foolishly. We cannot just go around with abandon and saying, nothing is going to happen. God's going to protect me. I'm hugging everybody. I'm kissing everybody. I'm shaking hands with everybody. I'm going into crowds of people I don't know. I'm acting the way that they're telling me don't do this, but I've got faith. Nothing's going to happen. That's not the thing to do. The thing to do is to recognize that that attitude is a temptation of the enemy to take God's word and twist it. So be very, very careful. Don't tempt the Lord. Don't walk in fear, but don't tempt the Lord with foolishness. So I want to leave it at that today. Don't tempt the Lord with foolishness. Now, if you didn't do it yet, put on your armor. If you didn't do it yet, read the whole Psalm. Get your mind on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Keep looking up. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.